what exactly is the potentially catastrophic climate anomaly that May was investigating in Antarctica? Why did the other scientists die in their cryopods? And how does all this new lore fit into the rest of the world of Overwatch as a whole? The May animated short Rise and Shine has just released, and it is packed with lore and information for us to break down and discuss. So let's get right into it. The first thing I really want to talk about is the anomaly. May and the rest of her team were stationed at Echo Point Antarctica to investigate mysterious changes in the climate around Earth's southernmost continent. We previously saw reports of this anomaly on an in-game map, where a note from May asks, what is causing the anomaly? Global warming, an unexplained phenomenon, or aliens? The anomaly in-game is displayed as a red circle on a map, but in the cinematic we got a lot more details. The first shot is the same map as the one in-game, but now it contains a lot more details, with these small red triangles spreading out from the epicentre of the anomaly, making it look like whatever is happening is spreading out and getting bigger. The second map located above it seems to show the geometry of the land around the anomaly, but the anomaly itself is a huge spike rising high above the rest of the land. It's also coloured orange, while the surrounding area is green. There is a small indicator above the map going from a frosty blue to a hot red, so this is possibly measuring temperature, blue being very cold as it should be, green being a bit warmer, but red being much much hotter. May also mentions that the atmospheric fluctuations above the anomaly have gotten... <gasps> it's much worse than we predicted! So could these fluctuations that she's talking about be strange weather patterns, rising temperatures, or maybe both? I think that this whole thing ties into global warming, but rather than being the result of greenhouse gases, it's being caused by this strange anomaly. But what could the anomaly actually be? Perhaps it's something underground and the spike of land above it is almost like a chimney expelling fumes, maybe a rogue underground omnium? Or could it be something else rising out of the ground? Perhaps a natural phenomenon like a volcano building up pressure and pushing the land and ice above it upwards. The next big lore dump comes from the news reports that May pulls up about the fall of Overwatch. Each report and magazine moves forward in time. The first is titled Insight and was likely published around the time that the public started to turn on Overwatch. The fighter jet pictured in the bottom is almost definitely the Slipstream, the ship that Tracer piloted and whose malfunction left her lost in time. The next report is from Atlas News with a headline about the global spread of anti-omnic violence. The headline below seems to mention an election, something that's later backed up in the next magazine, US Politics. So this is something new. It seems that around the time of Overwatch's fall, an election in the United States was taking place. So it would make sense that Overwatch would have been a hot topic during that election, perhaps with one side coming down in favour and the other against it. There has always been a bit of a conspiracy around the fall of Overwatch, with evidence suggesting that Reyes, now known as Reaper, conspired to bring them down from the inside. Could Overwatch's disgrace have been used to swing the polls in one candidate's favour? Perhaps the candidate that was favoured by Talon? The main headline and central picture here is about Reyes and Blackwatch, so it does fall in line with that narrative. Other headlines talk about drones, which is an interesting subject. Are these drones man-made, or are they being used by Omnix? Is this a new form of surveillance? The next set of headlines are in a technology magazine called Tomorrow. It talks about what's next for humanity, something that was also mentioned in the very first magazine. Can humans stay relevant in a world filled with omnics? Machines that are better, stronger, faster and smarter than we could ever be. It's an interesting insight into why humanity fears the omnics. It's not just the threat of another omnic crisis, but humanity is looking directly at its own replacements, something that they created and now no longer have any control over. The other headline talks about nanotechnology and how it's becoming popular in many different industries. Mercy pioneered the research for nanotech and medical purposes, so this is an interesting nod to her, but I don't think there's too much to read into here, although I do wonder how they're using it in transportation. Next we have a report about unrest in London, and this is followed up by another report about the Turing Green development being approved, with the London Mayor and Mondata hosting a press conference. The Turing Green development was a plan to build a new home for Omnics in London, but before it even got started, the Omnic extremist group Null Sector attacked and captured the Mayor and Mondata. This event was known as the Uprising, and we got to play through it in-game a couple months ago. One report talks about the Antarctic base going missing, and includes a report on climate change. Obviously, they're unaware of the existence of the mysterious anomaly. And then the very last report comes from Atlas News, and is about Overwatch being disbanded. And it's the same image we saw back in the recall cinematic, and it also mentions the Petrus Act. 
This is something that's been around since that very first cinematic with Winston. The Petrus Act was what shut Overwatch down, and Petrus was actually a director who was brought on board and took over control of Overwatch during its final days. He was in charge during the uprising in London, although Overwatch's presence there was not approved by him. I wonder if this act is named after him because he created it, or could it be in memory of him? Could director Petrus have died as a result of some kind of Overwatch operation, and then they passed the act to shut Overwatch down and named it after him? Another nice lore detail I really liked was the group photo, very much mirroring the classic photo of the early Overwatch agents. It's almost impossible to put names to the faces for most of these characters, but it's likely that the guy to May's right is the captain mentioned in the opening scene. So, Captain Opara is having the team hibernate. Come on, May. Cryo chamber time. Already? Huh. An hour ago. Be right there. We can see on his cryo chamber that he's from Numbani, and being the only black member of the team and his hat hinting at an African connection, this seems most likely. If we really wanted to try and put names to the characters, I would guess that the other two dressed in blue would have been the other scientists, while the two dressed in yellow could be the engineer and the researcher, but this is pure speculation. However now we need to get into the grim topic of how these people died. They intended to go into cryostasis for just a short while, a couple of weeks or so to preserve rations and wait for more to arrive. You can see that they aren't really afraid for their lives and it's just part of the job. May even seems excited. But then she says this. I'm leaving the sensors on, so when we wake up, I'll have a whole new data set to examine. Of course, nine years later, when a weak signal from Winston's recall message reaches the base, it's only May who the computer wakes up. And although no specific reason for the pod's failing is given, we do know that the base was running out of power. So could May leaving on all of her equipment have caused the batteries to die? It's certainly not her fault, there wouldn't have been a problem if everything had gone to plan. But seeing as it didn't, could the drain of her equipment on the power supply have cost her friends their lives? In the grand scheme of things, May's data could save millions of lives, but perhaps this supports her reason for her drive to get that data back to the rest of the world, to do something to make up for the deaths of her friends. What do you think about Overwatch's latest animated short? I absolutely loved it and I cannot wait for more. Also, let me know what you think about our theories, and do you have any of your own? As always, this is James for Curse saying thanks for watching, and enjoy the game. We're on our way!